Honourable Member for Edmonton Centre. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my distinct honour to rise today as a representative of the good people of Edmonton Centre to reply to the Honourable Lieutenant Governor's delivery of the speech from the throne. When I received the nomination to run as my party's candidate in Edmonton Centre just over one year ago, I couldn't have imagined that I would find myself standing here today in this assembly among such a diverse representation of the people of Alberta having the privilege and the responsibility of helping to lead our province. But having been awarded that honour, I embrace it with all of the joy and gravity I learned from one of my early mentors, a woman named Yin Lu. I met Yin in the summer of 1995 when I was enrolled in the outdoor leadership training program at Crow's Nest Lake Bible Camp. Now, Yin was not your average woman, nor what one might expect from an instructor in wilderness survival. She stood about five foot six, weighed maybe 120 pounds. She wore large framed glasses and her daily uniform consisted of a white lab coat, t-shirt, khaki pants, hiking boots, and an ever-present camp baseball cap. She was, in fact, a doctoral student studying medieval English literature. But she was also one of the greatest examples of a leader I've had the privilege of knowing. She was quite an unassuming. I don't believe I ever heard her raise her voice. Yet Rien really rarely had ever any trouble commanding respect. And that was because Yin led by example. One of the first things Yin introduced us to as part of our training program was the concept of servant leadership. Yin believed that the, rule, that the role of a leader was to take on the jobs that no one else wanted to do. Not only that, she believed that you didn't just do them with a sigh of resignation. Yin believed in taking on the things that no one else wanted to deal with and doing them with joy. The jobs, the problems that leave everyone standing around looking at their feet or quietly making for the exits, those were the things that Yin would make her own. She'd jump up after dinner and she'd race to the dish pit for the privilege of scrubbing the burnt pots. After a four-day out trip, she'd be the first one to offer to stay behind and clean and hang the ground sheets to dry so that others could go and take a hot shower first. And you know what? That kind of attitude is infectious. It didn't take long before a group of trainees began to adopt a similar attitude. It became a game to see who could outdo the others in taking on thankless tasks. And that, I believe, is the mark of a true leader. Leaders inspire. They bring out the best in those they lead. And they do it not just by standing in front and telling others what needs to be done. They do it by rolling up their sleeves, getting down in the dirt, and working alongside everyone else. They do it by taking on the jobs no one else wants to do and taking ownership of the problems no one else wants to tackle. So in the first months after my election as an MLA, I took the opportunity to immerse myself in the rich diversity of Edmonton Centre and connect with as many of the people, communities and organizations who call it home as I could. And Mr. Speaker, I dare say that Edmonton Centre is one of the most diverse and dynamic constituencies in the province of Alberta. Between 2001 and 2014, the population of our downtown core more than doubled from just over 6,000 to over 13,000 residents. And that growth continues with 140 new residential units in 2015, another 1,500 currently under construction, and another 2,000 planned. And that population is incredibly diverse including new Canadians, post-secondary students, professionals, public servants, families, and seniors. They span all income levels, social classes, ethnicities, ages, and gender and sexual identities. And I'm proud to have the honour of representing them all. I've met with the Oliver and Downtown Edmonton Community Leagues, committed collectives of young leaders who have stepped up to build real community in our urban core through gardens, potlucks, community investment, local advocacy and civic engagement, building a better city not only for themselves and their members, but for us all. Oliver is also home to a significant portion of Edmonton's LGBTQ community, members from whom I've had the pleasure of learning of their deep local history, working to build and support their community and advocate for their rights. I've also had the honour of accompanying them to meet with the Minister of Justice and celebrating with them as our government moved forward with adding gender identity and expression to the Alberta Human Rights Act 
and aided, our, and aided our schools in adopting policies to support full inclusion of trans, non-binary and two-spirited youth. These neighbourhoods are also home to many buildings and facilities for seniors, many seniors' homes, and I've enjoyed the opportunity to visit with the residents at each, to hear their thoughts and perspectives and make note of their concerns. And I look forward to building on these relationships and con continuing to learn from their years of experience. I've had the pleasure of supporting the work of community volunteers in Central McDougal, a community that is home to many new Canadians and many families all of whom are working to reach out to their neighbours, to provide programs and facilities that bring people together and offer much needed support. I've spoken with the residents of Queen Mary Park, also home to many new Canadians, who are regularly invited to connect with the longer term residents, again to build community and work towards a revitalization of these historic family neighbourhoods. And in the River Valley, I've connected with the residents of Rossdale and learned of their work to build stronger community and work with the city towards a new redevelopment plan. And it's important, Mr. Speaker, to recognize that Rossdale and indeed much of the land on which we are currently standing were historic meeting grounds for Alberta's Indigenous peoples. I recognize that within my constituency there are many residents of Indigenous descent. With them we are all treaty people. Here by the grace of an agreement to share in the bounty and prosperity of this territory and to provide for the health, welfare, education and infrastructure of Alberta's First Nations and their members. And I'm proud, Mr. Speaker, of our government's commitment to see this treaty truly and fully honoured. I was moved by the Premier's heartfelt apology last June for the legacy of residential schools, the effects of which we still see rippling through the heart of our city. And I've been pleased to see First Nations given increased prominence, their voices being heard in our consultations on the Climate Leadership Plan and Mental Health Review. I look forward to the new opportunities for us to continue to rebuild trust, that will come with the repeal of Bill 22 and repatriation of Indigenous sacred objects. Mr. Speaker, in my 10 months since being elected, I've had the opportunity to meet with countless community groups and organizations who embrace the philosophy I learned from Yin Lu and take on the challenging work of supporting many marginalized communities. In Edmonton Centre, there's no hiding from the fact that there are many in need. Every day our residents see people who are homeless or inadequately housed, who are struggling with mental health, addictions or emotional trauma, or who were simply caught in the economic turmoil caused by the recent historic drop in the price of oil and our over-dependence on a single commodity, a single price and a single market. And Mr. Speaker, I am constantly amazed at the number of dedicated men and women I meet every week who roll up their sleeves day after day to do whatever they can to help meet these needs. There are far too many for me to name, but I look forward to opportunities to introduce some of them in the future to this House. These organizations are out there fighting homelessness, promoting harm reduction, offering safe spaces, meals, bathroom and laundry facilities for homeless youth and adults, affordable, accessible health and dental care, mental health supports and assistance navigating government programs and services, and most importantly, a chance to reclaim the dignity that should be afforded all human beings. Mr. Speaker, I ran for this position in no small part to ensure that government would continue to support this important work while endeavouring to reinvest in key services as we are still recovering from the effects of poorly planned or considered cuts by previous governments. I'm pleased to have the honour to serve with the government that is holding that line and I also have the honour of representing two strong post-secondary institutions, Northwest College, which offers a wide range of ground-level programs that offer thousands of Albertans, including new Canadians, Indigenous students and students with disabilities, to access new and better careers. I'm excited to see that impact expand with their new Singmar Centre for Learning. And Grant McEwen University, which is my first alma mater, though it was a community college when I attended, as a university, it now offers a wide range of degrees in a uniquely student-focused learning environment. I graduated from their internationally acclaimed music program in 1995, and I'm incredibly pleased that it and all of their arts programs will be coming to Edmonton Centre in fall of 2017. Because Edmonton Centre has long been one of our city's main hubs for the arts, being the home of the Edmonton Symphony Orchestra and the Windspear Centre, the Citadel Theatre, the Art Gallery of Alberta, the upcoming new Royal Alberta Museum, music venues like the newly launched Needle Vinyl Tavern, and a wide variety of galleries and artist spaces. 
It's been my pleasure to offer my vigorous support to all of these organizations, and it's amongst my highest priorities to continue to see them thrive and contribute to the vibrancy of our city's culture and economy. I'm also thrilled with the growth of new independent businesses within our downtown core and particularly along its northern edge. And we'll continue to work with partners in local government and community to remove barriers to their success and help them access the many tools our government is making available to help them thrive. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, I would like to acknowledge that I have the honor of representing many public servants, men and women who spend every day working on behalf of the people of Alberta, including many who provide the essential supports that allow us to do our work in this House. I'm proud to stand with our government and our commitment to maintaining secure and stable funding to our key services. And a rational, evidence-based approach to improving the operations of our public service so that my constituents, from the front lines up to our ministries, are not needlessly vilified, but instead are engaged as willing partners in offering the best service for value to the people of Alberta. In conclusion, there's one more story, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to share about my time at Crow. On the final full day of a six-day out trip, our training group was descending from a mountain ridge, and we began making our way towards our final campsite. This trip on a normal day would normally take, oh, about two to three hours. On that day, it took nearly seven. That's because in the upper areas of the Rockies in late May, it's not unusual to still have several feet of snow. That day was especially warm, and as at that time, I weighed about 250 pounds, plus the weight of a 50-pound pack, with every step I took, my leg would plunge up to my hip in snow, a phenomenon known as post-holding. As a result, I was forced to progress at a snail's pace. But as I did, Mr. Speaker, our leader, Yin, and all of my fellow members stayed with me every agonizing step of the way. They offered encouragement in handfuls of trail mix and ensured that I was never alone. Because, Mr. Speaker, true leadership True citizenship, true community lies in not abandoning those in need and ensuring that no one gets left behind. <laughs> to quote the Lieutenant Governor's gracious speech, in tough times we always pull together. We have each other's backs. We support each other in these times instead of making a bad situation worse. And most importantly, Mr. Speaker, we don't make short-sighted decisions for short-term gain that hurt the most vulnerable and see them left behind. Here, here. Mr. Speaker, I look forward to coming alongside the people of Edmonton Centre, hearing their voices, understanding their challenges, and supporting their work. I pledge to take on the difficult jobs, to make their issues my own, and to work with integrity with my colleagues on both sides of this aisle to ensure that the Alberta advantage extends to everyone. Thank you.